Today class, we are going to learn how to make histograms. Jacob here has already started on one. Say, where's Luke at? Probably skipping a lot to play. Alright, I'll try to find him. Where have you been? Hey, what are you doing? I'm trying to lift. You're back in class. <laughs> and what? Make this histogram. You need Fine! You need but I'm not going to stop lifting. Hey, like histograms. I don't even know how to make a histogram. Better learn. I'm going to teach you how to make one. Fine. You think, uh, think you can learn how to make it? If you'd love to keep lifting. Luke, I think you just need some nature. Everything's better with nature. Fine, I'll try. Really calms me down. That's how I get my histograms done. All right, let's try it. All right, I'll teach you how to make histograms outside. All right. Now that we're out in the natures, are you ready to finally learn how to make a histogram? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Let me get my reel back in first. All right. Let me find. We're gonna. Oh, learn. I got one. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> We're going to learn all about how to make histograms by hand. Nature decided to move inside today, so we're going to have to learn histograms inside. I don't care if you like it or not. Okay. Alright, first of all, a little thing about histograms. Histograms, they show the spread of quantitative data. And right here, we have our data that shows the amount of wins in a 50-game season. And that's what we're going to make our histogram about. So that's the numbers, right? Yeah, numbers is quantitative data. When making a histogram, you're going to want your bars to be the same width, and you want them to touch. And if you want to color it, they all have to be the same color. Um, all right. So right here is your x-axis, and this shows the amount of quantitative data, and we'll be using that for the bars. Also, here is your Y, and that shows the counter rate. Okay. Now, we're going to have to put, we're going to make a table to put all of our data in. And we need to find classes, count frequency, relative frequency, and class boundary. Okay, first off for our table, for the table we're going to find the class width. And this is found by taking the uh, range divided by the number of classes. And for the number of classes, we're always going to use 5. So what you're saying is the biggest number is 45 and the smallest is 20. So we're going to do 45 minus 20 divided by 5. Yep. And, and then you're going to... So that would be 5. Yep. So once you find your class range, uh, then you always round up. So what's one? So even though it's five, you're going to round it up All to time. six. Every time. So our class width is six. Yep. Very good. You ready? All right, first of all, we're going to find our classes. And to do this, you start out with your smallest number, and you use your class width to add on to that. So you start, you need six numbers, so you always count the first number. Okay, so you're saying so you start with 20. 20. Yes. So then 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Okay, so then we go 20 to 25. Yep, and that's six numbers. And then you go up one. So start with 26 and do it again. Okay, so now we do 26, and then you add 5, so then you get 31. Yep. And, and you, you carry out that? that process till you have 5 classes. Okay, so is that right? Yep, yeah, it looks about right to me. Alright, next. We're going to find 
the count frequency. And to do this, you look at your classes. And right here we have 20 to 25. And then you look at your data, and you're going to fit the data within classes. So you're going to count how many numbers are between 20 and 25. Right here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So your count frequency would be 6 Okay. for that class. So then for the next one, you go from you count. 26 to 31. Yep. You have 1, 2, 3. Yep. Three. And then you have 3 here. Then you have 5, 5, one. That's exactly right. Yay. Moving on. Next, we need to find a relative frequency. And to do this, you take your count frequency divided by the total amount of data. And we have 20 pieces of data. So the first one, you take 6 divided by 20 times 100 to get your percent of. So that's 30%? Yes, it is. And you do that for the next four other classes. Then you get 15, 25, 25, and 5. And then it adds and up to 100, right? Exactly. So finally, we have to find our class boundaries. And here, what you do is take your smallest number subtract 0.5, and your largest, you add 0.5. So why don't you write that so down? It's, so you subtract 0.5 from 20 and get 19.5, and then you add 0.5 from the 25, and you get 25.5. Yeah. Okay. So write that out. And f to start of your next one, you take your highest number, and you start with that one, and you repeat the process. So you do 25.5 because it's the biggest number. Yep. And then you go to 31.5. Yep. And just continue that process for the next classes. Finally, we're going to get to actually drawing the histogram. And number one, you need a title. So Okay, so what should I call it? Uh, well, it's about the amount of wins in a season. So you put distribution of wins in a season. That would work. Next, we get uh, to write out the x and y axis. Your x axis is your uh, quantitative data. And this is your class boundaries, which we wrote over here in our table. That describes the number of wins, which is how we label it, right? Yep. So label it. And your y axis is your frequency. And this is your count frequency over here. So it goes one through six. So you are able to count by one, go by ones and label that your frequency. Okay, next we get to draw the actual bars. So for your first frequency count, it's six. So 19.5 through 25.5 goes up to 6. Just like that. And remember to keep them all the same width and they are all connected together. So continue that for your next class boundaries.
looking good. All right, so let's compare it with the data. First boundary goes up to six for your count. Three, five, five, and then one. Looks good. So that's all there is to it. That's all there is to it. It's making histograms. Think you can do another one on your own? Someday? I guess so. Looks good. We're done lifting. Instagram. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right? Yeah. It is. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. <laughs> That's Instagram right there. That's a nice look at it. He just made it all by himself. Because <laughs> I thought. Because I'm proud. <laughs> Are we putting that in there? I'm so freaking proud of it. Are you me. done recording? Are you going to click stop record? No. <laughs> <laughs> He's so beautiful. He did it all by himself. That's all we. It just took ten hours, but we got it. You know. <laughs> ten minutes just blew by. Doing nothing. Yeah, so did three hours. <laughs> Jacob, I don't like the negativity. Oh. It's been recording. What? God. <laughs> okay. How are we gonna do this? Yeah, we might as well. Okay, might as well. Let's well, just pack it up. Let's, let's say... Nature decided to move inside. <laughs> yeah. Alright, well, nature decided to move inside. Is that alright? I guess so. Alright. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Stop. I changed voices. <laughs> <laughs> Stop laughing, no! No! I'm allowed to laugh, I'm the camera guy. It's not my fault that you- You press record. Huh? Alright. God! <laughs> be more like Jacob, just trying to learn. Not sit in the back of the room. <laughs> there Jamie, Sean, Sean. <laughs> we're going good. All right. Nature decided to move in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. No, get back here. Jamie.